Tonight, now the opening round of what should be one of the most interesting election seasons here in Arizona history. So the outcomes in Arizona tonight are going to tee up some of the races in November that are going to get a lot of national attention. This is a really interesting night, so we're really happy that political editor Dennis Welch is back in studio with us. Welcome. Well, wouldn't miss an election night for <laughs> the world. And obviously when you're talking about the top races, the top race here in Arizona, really one of the top races across the country this fall, it's going to be that U.S. Senate seat here. Now, this could be one of the most expensive races in the country because of Arizona's electoral importance this year. And in that Republican primary, incumbent Martha McSally is defending the seat that Governor Ducey appointed her to following John McCain's death. Now, she is facing local businessman Daniel McCarthy, who has attacked her from the right. Now, the winner will move on to challenge Democratic candidate Mark Kelly, who only faces a write in challenger. Now, moving on to that Democratic uh, primary in Arizona's 6th Congressional District. This is a crowded field that features business owners Carl Gentles and Stephanie Rimmer, as well as Anita Malik and form, a former tech executive and Hiral Tipperneni, a physician. Now, the winner here moves on to challenge incumbent Congressman David Schweiker, who was admonished just last week by the House and agreed to pay a $50,000 fine after he admitted to nearly a dozen ethics violations. And looking at the Senate primary, the state Senate primary, Republican primary in District 15. Now, this is one of the nastiest, most expensive races you'll find in a legislative race this year or any other year. State Representative Nancy Bardo is trying to move from the House to the state Senate, where she is challenging incumbent Heather Carter. To be clear, these two do not like each other very much. And the winner here will basically take the seat because there are no general election challengers. Now, finally, the final race here to watch uh, is that race for Maricopa County Sheriff or, or Joe Arpaio. The question is, can he complete or at least make that first step in his comeback? He will have to beat Glendale Police Officer Mike Crawford and Jerry Sheridan, who was Arpaio's former chief deputy. Now, the winner here faces Paul Pinzone, who soundly defeated Arpaio four years ago and put an end to his 24-year run in that office. Now, that said, I do want to bring in uh, and welcome Republican political consultant Marcus Del Artino. Now, Marcus, first question for you. We just kind of rounded out some of the top races. I want to ask you about the trends you're seeing this year with early voting, what you're seeing, what it means for the general election here in November, particularly for Republicans. We're seeing a lot of red flags, bad signs for the party. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because we're going to compare this year to 2016, which is the last presidential election. Um, and the turnout numbers, I think at the end of the day, when today's numbers come in, will be roughly the same as 2016. What is drastically different is the Democrat enthusiasm in this election. And let me give you this example. In 2016, Republicans accounted for 52.5% of the returns of early ballots at this point. Democrats were 40%, just under 36.9. As of this morning or last night, Democrats um, are at 45% of the returns and Republicans are only at 43.9% of returns. Yeah. Uh, so it's a massive swing that's occurring right yeah, but can you talk to us a little bit, too, about what you're seeing with independents? Because obviously, if you're an independent, you can request a ballot from one party or the other. We're hearing a lot about trends where a lot of these independents requesting Democratic ballots this year. Yeah, that's what's interesting is that the amount, the percentage of independents has, has remained roughly the same back to back to 2016. So it's not like there's been a huge surge in them. But what has happened is a bigger request of the Democrat ballots um, in compared to prior years. All this evidence is pointing to two things. One is the enthusiasm on the Democratic side um, of the aisle uh, going into the general election and, you know, pointing out a, a strategy, if you will, for the Republicans. They've got to move up enthusiasm. We've got to get ballots returned um, to even compete. OK, now I want you to put, uh, you know, look into the crystal ball there, Marcus. I want to look ahead here from what we're learning, what we're seeing now in the primary. I want to I want to ask you about the balance of power, how this could all play out in November and really change the state. Now, I want to take a look at this graphic when I'm talking about the balance of power. Let's look at the state House of Representatives here where you see Republicans hold a slim majority of 31 to 29. Now we can bring up a graphic here in the state Senate where the uh, Republicans there do hold a 17 to 13 advantage in number of seats. 
seats there. Now, based on what you're seeing here in the primaries with the early ballots, uh, with Democratic enthusiasm and how these races are shaping up and how they're going to end up tonight after this primary, do you see any possibility where Democrats can control one or both of these chambers that would really change the way the state is run? And it's been decades since Democrats have been in power in either one of those chambers. Absolutely. There is no doubt that that is a reality that exists. Um, I think the Democrats have a uh, more than excellent chance of, uh, of taking over the House of Representatives. And frankly, uh, and I'm one of the few that would point this out, I think they've got a legitimate chance of taking over the state Senate. Um, you know, the, all the stars at this point in the primary uh, uh, are aligned uh, for them. They're, they're raising more money. Their enthusiasm is up. Uh, there's no doubt they have a legitimate chance at, at taking both houses of the legislature. All right. Well, thank you very much. That was Marcus Dell'Artino, Republican political consultant. I want to thank you for your time. And obviously, it's been a lot of talk over the past several years about how, you know, the changing demographics, the changing politics here in Arizona and seeing, I just want to say, like, look, this could be a watershed year, as Marcus is saying, judging by what he's seeing here in the primaries as we move on into that general election. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasm out there. Absolutely. And we want to point out, because this has been a record year of early returns, I mean, early mail-in ballots and things like that, we should start getting returns fairly quickly after 8 o'clock tonight. We should be. And now, there is a trend, a history here, and not a great history in voting here. The Maricopa County has been very slow in counting ballots. Well, they've spent quite a bit of money. I believe it's up to or it's $6 million in getting new machines that are quicker. They've been counting uh, now for a, quite a while. And based on uh, the majority of these votes, these ballots, uh, you know, uh, being cast early, we should get a majority of those uh, outcomes and those returns here tonight. So we should have a really a very clearer picture than we have in past primary nights, past election nights, on who has won which of these races. And Dennis is going to be live with us throughout the night right here on Arizona's Family. Thanks, Dennis.